In this video, I am going to fully introduce you with a special type of work, which is called an expedited work. The main thing about this work is that it has a higher priority or importance level when compared to the regular non-expedited work. It belongs to the one-time work request and it cannot be used inside a periodic work request. It is mostly used when executing and triggering some logic that needs to run immediately without a delay. Like for example, sending a chat message, adding an image attachment, downloading a file or even handling a payment transaction for the user itself. An expedited work should execute quickly in the background, it should begin immediately and continue to execute even if the user closes the application. Now, uh, one thing to point out here is the difference in uh, expedited work when using devices that uh, have an Android version lower than uh, Android 12 and devices that have an Android uh, version greater than Android 12. In the first case, when using lower API levels, the expedited work will also trigger a foreground service and it will show and display a notification. While on a greater API levels, that may not be the case and you could run this kind of work even without the notification displayed to the user. So uh, when it comes to the execution of a worker, you need to know a few things. The application that uses a work manager does not have an uh, unlimited amount of uh, execution time. Rather, the system splits the execution time between uh, all applications on your device. The system itself uh, must also allocate uh, execution time to uh, expedited work before it can run. And uh, when your application uh, uses its uh, execution time and reaches its uh, allocated quota, then you can no longer execute uh, an expedited work until the quota refreshes itself. Now, uh, while your application is in the foreground, the execution time will not start counting. So an execution time quota applies only when your application is in the background or when your application moves to the background. Okay, so those were some uh, basic uh, and uh, quite important uh, information that uh, you should know about the expedited work. And now uh, let's do some uh, practical stuff. Also, if you haven't watched my previous video about uh, the work manager library, then uh, be sure to watch it before you continue watching this video. All right, so here, uh, as you can see at this point, um, I'm using a, a custom work request. So here I have overridden uh, that the work function, which basically uh, has a one simple delay of, let's say, maybe uh, 10 seconds. So this delay basically represents uh, some kind of a simulated uh, work that we are doing uh, on the background thread and after that work uh, is completed then we are returning this uh, successful result okay uh, down below here i also have one function be uh, that basically just uh, creates a simple notification that we're going to trigger uh, with this worker as well uh, and as you can see here in our main activity we are just uh, creating a simple work request and we are enqueuing our work with the work manager we also have here an initial delay and a back of uh, criteria or a back of policy as well. So now uh, when it comes to the expedited work, uh, we just need to specify one function in our uh, one time request builder here, which is uh, called um, uh, set uh, expedited. Okay. So this function accepts uh, one parameter, which is called the uh, out of a quota policy. And there are two different values that we can use. So a run as a non expedited work and a drop work request. In this case, I'm going to use this first one which means that uh, basically when uh, we lose that uh, execution quota or when we reach that uh, execution quota limit then we could transform this uh, expedited work as a non-expedited work okay or we could just uh, drop that uh, work uh, in general so in this case i have chose this uh, first option uh, anyhow after we uh, call this a uh, function we also need to override one more function in our custom worker so let's here uh, press ctrl o and we need to override this uh, get foreground info function, which does return a foreground info uh, instance. And now I'm going to create here a new function, which will basically provide this uh, get foreground info. And with this uh, same type here, we need to specify what kind of a notification we want to trigger. Okay. So basically now with this function, we can specify uh, what kind of um, notification we want to display uh, to our users whenever we uh, run this uh, custom worker or this uh, expedited work. And here down below, I'm going to create one function, uh, get uh, foreground info. This function will return the foreground info. 
So we'll just here specify uh, how to provide this uh, actual type. So here I'm going to just return a uh, foreground info. So let's call here foreground info and we can specify here, here uh, three parameters. So the first one is the notification ID. For example, that will be number one. Uh, for the actual notification, I'm going to call this create notification function and pass uh, the context. I just here specify a context as a parameter as well. There you go. And the third parameter here is a type of a foreground service. So let's here type um, or a service info actually uh, dot uh, foreground service type. So we can specify here uh, camera location uh, and so on and so on. And we could here type just uh, this uh, first one, so none. Nevertheless, and here we're going to see uh, a warning saying that uh, this foreground info with uh, the third parameter actually requires an API level 29. Uh, which is why I'm going to add here a uh, surround uh, if check. And if this uh, uh, SDK integer is actually less than the 29, in that case, I'm going to just call this foreground info, but without this uh, third parameter, okay? All right, so now in this uh, get foreground info function, I'm going to return this uh, result of this function. So get foreground uh, info, and let's pass here the context. There we go. And now with this function, we have basically specified uh, the foreground info, which basically does actually create a notification. So when we are using uh, an Android uh, uh, 12 and lower, then this notification will start immediately. So we can now uh, try to launch this um, uh, emulator. So let's just first, let me just here first remove that application. So we can run it from, uh, from the start all over again. And now let's uh, uh, launch this application. Observe the locket as well. And after we launch this um, application, our application will crash. So the reason why here is, let me just uh, open it up. We're going to receive here an error saying that, uh, let me just see uh, where that error actually is. Uh, it says that uh, an expedited jobs cannot be delayed, okay? So here in our work request, we have specified the initial delay to be 10 seconds. Uh, but we cannot do that when we are running the expedited work. So we can just uh, comment out this uh, initial delay. And now uh, let's uh, trigger this uh, once again. Let's open up the locket. So, okay. As you can see, our notification now is displayed. And after 10 seconds, after that delay of uh, 10 seconds from our custom worker, then uh, our work will complete and this notification will uh, close itself immediately, okay? So in our custom worker, as you can see, we are adding a delay of uh, 10 seconds. And after that delay, we are returning a successful result. So after that result is returned, then uh, this notification will disappear by itself, okay? And as you can see here, I have also specified that uh, this notification cannot be closed by uh, uh, manually by, uh, by ourselves. So it will be closed uh, only after we actually uh, finish uh, this uh, work that we have specified. So let's uh, try to launch this once again. As you can see, this notification will start immediately. And after this delay of 10 seconds, uh, this notification will uh, close itself. So we cannot do that manually until this, uh, this work uh, finishes. Okay, and there you go. So it works uh, just fine. Now, uh, if we try to actually uh, launch this application on um, API level, let's say 33, so uh, an API or Android uh, that is higher than uh, Android 12, uh, then that notification will actually not uh, appear. So let's just remove this application from this uh, new device. So we are using uh, an Android that is greater than uh, Android 12. And let's try to launch this application on that new device. In that case, as you can see, the worker will also start, but notification will not be visible. Okay, so here we don't see a notification. And after 10 seconds, this work will complete. There you go. So it's completed by itself, but we haven't seen the notification. Now, um, why is that? Well, if you're using uh, an um, API level 33 and higher, uh, then you also need to add here a, a post notification permission. So let's add here a post notification. There you go. So basically, if you want to see a notification on a devices that uses uh, Android 12 and higher or API level 33 and higher, uh, then you need to add this permission and request from the user to allow you to actually post notifications. So I have added here a permissions accompanies library. So I'm going to use that same library to specify uh, that permission request. So let's just here uh, call, for example, one variable permission. Let's call here remember permission state. And here I'm going to call, um, let's see, so Android, 
dot uh, manifest dot permission dot uh, post notifications. Uh, also, as you can see, this um, a company's permission is actually an experimental library, so we need to add um, one more annotation here. And also, as you can see, this uh, post notification uh, actually requires an API level 33. So this post notification uh, permission is required to be requested only on an API level 33 and higher. So you don't need to request this permission if you're using uh, API levels that are uh, lower than a 33. In this case, I'm going to just specify here um, add required API uh, annotation here uh, on uh, my main activity. There we go, and that warning will disappear. Now, within this launched effect, before we trigger uh, this uh, expedited work, I need to check and actually request this permission. So let's here uh, say if uh, permission dot uh, status is granted. So if the permission is granted, then we can trigger this code and start our work or enqueue our work. And if uh, that is not true, then we need to request this permission. So let's just call here permission uh, permission dot launch permission request. And now uh, let's uh, launch this application once again. So now we should be uh, seeing this notification uh, pop up. So now let's allow this permission. Okay, and I'm going to just launch this application once again to confirm that uh, this um, permission has been granted. Okay, so now it has been granted. And as you can see, uh, we still don't see that um, notification in our application. And that work uh, has uh, already succeeded, okay? So the reason why we don't see here a notification in our um, device, even though we have specified and actually requested that new permission, is because that there is one more step that we need to add in our custom worker. So when you're using an uh, Android 12 and higher, uh, you need to call here uh, one more function, which is called a set foreground, okay? So this uh, set foreground function needs to be called within this uh, do work function and that way you will be able to trigger uh, this uh, notification in your uh, Android application when using uh, an Android 12 and higher devices, okay? So here I'm going to also call uh, get the foreground uh, info function and pass this uh, application context, okay? Only this time uh, I'm going to actually trigger this uh, foreground um, before we actually uh, add a delay, okay? So before we even start our work, we need to specify and trigger this notification, otherwise we may get uh, some uh, error or exception. Also, uh, one important thing here to note is that this uh, set foreground function can also throw an uh, illegal state exception if the process is uh, subject to the foreground service restriction. So uh, if we uh, check the official documentation, you will see that they also say here that this uh, function can throw an exception if that launch was actually restricted. So what does that mean actually? Well, uh, there are a few restrictions that we need to uh, be aware of. So applications that target Android 12 or API level 33 and higher cannot start a foreground service while running in the background, except for a few special cases. And that's why we need to wrap uh, our actual uh, function within a try and catch block. So let's here just add a try and catch block. There we go. And if uh, something goes wrong, we can just return here a different result. So result uh, dot uh, failure. Okay, so now let's uh, try uh, running our application so we can see whether now uh, this notification will start on uh, Android devices that uses uh, Android 12 and higher. Okay, so now we can see this notification, there we go, and after 10 seconds this notification will uh, close itself and uh, our work uh, will complete, there we go. Alright, so now you have seen a couple of different examples uh, of uh, an expedited work with the work manager library. Uh, you have seen how this uh, expedited work actually runs on uh, Android 12 and lower devices and also on uh, Android 12 and higher devices as well. So uh, when using an expedited work, you need to be sure that you actually override this uh, get foreground info function. And if you want to see a notification on a, on a Android 12 and higher uh, devices, uh, then you should also call this uh, set foreground function. And also you need to be sure that you are actually requesting this uh, post notifications permission. So uh, be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think about this uh, expedited work. And of course, uh, be sure to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. For this video, that'll be all.